thank you for taking the time to listen to me. So Jim started out by going back in time and say, hey, we were the Linux Foundation, we did Linux. And he showed a slide from like six, seven years ago. I have a slide from five years ago as well. Um, five years ago, we, sh we showed really how as much as containers were, hey, we're gonna make virtualization obsolete, virtualization is for floppy disks. The technology behind virtualization and containers was sort of the, we were rethinking that space. And we launched clear containers and later Kata containers. And I have one a sort of flashback slide where we could talk about, okay, what happened? Containers came up, containers were about isolation and containers were about how we deploy software. Now, containers changed the world. Containers changed how we deploy software, how we develop software, completely. Um, at the same time, security was a question. How do we secure containers? How do we isolate? How do we do interesting things there? Um, and in one of the staff meetings at, at work where some, some guy in the staff said, hey, well, virtualization is dead. We should stop this whole virtualization thing and we're gonna do something else. Because it's too heavy, too hard. The, the, I asked myself, and we asked it out loud, how hard can it be, right? The most dangerous word in computer science. How, how hard can it be to actually reimagine re virtualization? And we did it with clear containers. In the beginning, all we showed was we can do a very lightweight isolation. Oh, and by the way, we can glue it into Docker, although Docker was kind of, at the time, not mature enough to have a plug-in architecture, so it was hard to, to make it work. Over the, over the last few years, we went from something that was really hard to use, but it was an interesting concept to, hey, Docker and, and modular OCI showed that, an, that containers are an ecosystem, not an implementation, and there's multiple ways of making backends, there's multiple ways of doing containers. Um, and it wasn't just us, the Hyper-V company uh, did the same thing around the same time, and at some point we all decided to, to sort of join hands and pick the best of technology of pieces just from the previous speaker. You have multiple innovation points and at some point you make a step together. You combine two new things together. Um, and then Kubernetes happened. And Kubernetes was basically saying, yeah, containers are great, but here's how you use them. Here's how you deploy them. Here's how you put them into production use. And it was another whole bunch of work to make sure virtualization, containers, all that work together very well. Um, and in the last few years, we're now at the point where the Kata container technology is mature. People are using it in production. Our friends at SUSE have started shipping it in their OS. Um, cloud gaming, people are using it for gaming in the cloud as a way of having high density, but still secure kind of gaming. Um, sort of it has arrived. Okay, so why am I saying this? Why am I talking about the past? Well, we, one of the things that changed was really, okay, so virtualization technology isn't about Enterprise VMs that emulate a floppy so that your expense control system from the 1980s can still expense, process your expenses. It's really about, it's lighter. It's about isolation. It's about the, the basic of the technology. And it's basically a spectrum. The, the problems virtualization technology can solve for you are not just virtualization as an enterprise technology. And earlier this year, the, the, fire, the Amazon guys launched Firecracker and they showed, hey, Lightweight virtualization technology is great for fast. Not even containers, never mind containers. Containers are big and heavy, remember? Virtualization was big and heavy, containers are big and heavy. Let's do fast. And they use the same kind of technology for isolating fast from different customers from each other. Um, and it really, one of the things our group realized is, and we talked to many of our customers is, well, virtualization is changing. What people need from their isolation is changing. So what, what, what do, so what do people want? We talk to our customers, we talk to the community folks, we talk to a lot of people, and sort of five themes came out of that. The first theme was everybody has to be lightweight. Well, it means many different things to many people, but lightweight was something that came back over and over again. Fast, well, no, everybody wants fast. <laughs> but what does fast mean? Um, the more tangible one was density. People want to use the, their, the same hardware for more and more and more work. If Amazon would run one fast per server, they wouldn't be in business. They want to run hundreds or thousands of fast jobs on the server. Um, it needs to be quick. The world where you install a server, install a VM, leave it running for three months and then shut it down, 
has gone. The file job runs five, 10 milliseconds and it's gone again. If it takes you three, three minutes to start, doesn't matter, you don't, you don't exist. And security is almost not negotiable. Jim earlier launched secure computing, but security as a concept is, every customer we talk to says security, that's a baseline, you cannot negotiate security. You can negotiate density, you can negotiate startup, you can negotiate lightweight. Security is a bar, it's just a baseline. Okay, so, we re, we, and then we went back to the same customer and said, okay, so you mean lightweight, but you're, for fast, what does lightweight mean? Two megabytes. And I went to the guy who runs the cloud, and the cloud virtualization layer for, for, for a big customer. What does lightweight mean? Well, two, gig, two gigabyte. So some of these things are proportional to the problem space they're in. And that means there's not really one size fits all. Um, at startup time, same thing. Fa the fast guys say, yeah, my, my whole job runs 10 milliseconds. A fast startup is one millisecond or less. But if you're run, run, running your enterprise VM in a big cloud provider and the thing runs for three months, a eh, few seconds, who cares? So all of these things are proportional. And one of the challenges you always have is, okay, so from a technology perspective, what do you do? You have this wide range of requirements from very rich requirements with tolerances for, for, for lightweight, for density versus the very fast. And one thing we started working with with a bunch of our community partners is something we call Rust VMM. And that is basically, for hard time building one hypervisor or one virtualization stack for everything, build a set of components that you can stack together in any way you want in order to make it, to make it easy to make a domain-specific solution that still shares a bunch of the common building blocks. So the fast guys can use half of this or maybe a third of this, but if you want to make a full enterprise hypervisor, you use all of it. Or you use different versions of the same block. You can make a lightweight version of the device model and you can make a very fat, rich version of the device model and swap them out. So rather than having one virtualization block, you make, we build a set of building blocks that are replaceable, that are optional, and you can very fastly compose into a domain solution. All the way from fast or lighter to all the way to enterprise or richer without having to reinvent the wheels of the things that you can share. Now, how do you build a set of building blocks like that without actually getting lost? So one of the things one of my team did is, okay, so let's also build an actual implementation of this that is relatively rich so that we can verify all of it works together. This is what we call the cloud hypervisor. It's a full hypervisor for a virtual machine setup. It's, a, it's an early phase, so don't expect it to be, competitive, to, to be in the production tomorrow. But we're using this to prove that all the blocks we're building as components can be used together in a rich setup, but also we have configuration of this that are less than that. And it turns out, yeah, to make a hypervisor, you need more than just these building blocks. You need to add device backends to it. What, what kind of storage do you use? How does your networking work? Um, but if you don't prove out the, the set of blocks, you have no idea if they ever work together. So we have to build blocks to put them together. In addition to the light with fast, the, the container side, this is also sort of the, the other side of the spectrum. Um, so when we say reimagining virtualization, it is really about being composable, being domain specific, while sharing as many blocks as you can from, from a common building block set. Okay, so Okay, we've solved virtualization, let's move on. Um, my team is very busy with this and we're spending a lot of time making sure we get this right because virtualization and then the OS around it is a building block for everything else you do in your computer. Okay, so the second thing that Jim, uh, Jim alluded by spend my time on is okay, what, the, what else is there? And Jim kind of implied this earlier, as the Linux Foundation went from the kernel all the way to networking, to higher up Node.js, higher up in the stack, so did we in terms of how we look at software. Um, software isn't just a kernel. Software isn't just a virtualization layer. Software isn't just some library, glibc, and maybe a compiler here or there. Software is all the way to an end application and back. And in my, day, in my spare time when I can actually do coding, like an hour or two a day, yes, Jim, I do code. <laughs> um, I, look at, I like looking at performance because performance is a place where 
you can look at things in a different way and get a different outcome. So when we looked at performance for a bunch of basic machine learning and other operations, it turns out that performance is not a problem you solve in one spot in the stack. Performance is something you have to solve in every layer for it all work together. And it's a nonlinear uh, effort. We found, okay, we solved performance in matrix multiply. I spent a few Saturday afternoons matrix, working on matrix multiply. It was great. I got a 6x performance improvement. That's a great Saturday afternoon, right? It turns out if you deploy the same algorithm in a specific cloud provider, you wouldn't get any benefit because if they didn't actually pass through some of the basic data you need to get the, that performance improvement. Oh, and by the way, then the, the layer on top, the machine learning layer, had a matrix that which was, wasn't nicely 64 by 64, it was 65 by 63. And not a, not a nice power of two. So you had to change the machine laying, layer above it to say, can we make the matrix at least sort of a multiple of eight to get nice performance? So performance turns out to be something you have to do all the way up and down. That makes it an interesting challenge. And in open source, we have the source code for every single layer of the stack. So that became a Sunday afternoon project. Um, can we do the rest of the stack as well? And the answer is yes, we can. And at work, we, we realized that this is a hard problem. A lot of people in the open source world have their own sort of project, and they know kind of what happens around it, but not a lot of people really look at what's up and down. And from an end user, it's even harder. If, can you imagine being a system administrator and having to deal with eight layers of the stack and making sure they all work together? That's a hard problem. So one of the things we started doing at Intel is, okay, can we just publish one of these, make sure it works well, and then have people, even if they don't use it, they can at least see how it works together, and they can compare their version of this with what, what could be, and if they can, as a way of learning from it. Hey, if you want to use it, you can download it, it's great. If you don't want to use it, that's fine too. But if your performance is not as good as what we show you, at least steal the performance bit from it. Right? We want to show you what can be done and how it is done. And this is almost an integration exercise because it sounds boring, but putting it all together in a way that works together is actually harder than it sounds. So we did machine learning. It worked great. So it's like four or five people, DevOps team, measure every day and just keep tweaking at it. We ended up doing something around data analytics. Data analytics is an even bigger problem. And um, Spark is a, and Hadoop are a great project. But getting Spark set up correctly, using all the layers in the stack, is actually an incredibly complicated challenge. Because you have virtualization, you have the kernel, you have NUMA, you have network, you have all those components. If you get one of them not optimal, the whole performance collapses. So we decided, let's do one for Spark. Um, and we did that, and that was fine. And we got, for machine learning, we got a 12x performance increase by doing things right. Now, I, I don't like giving these numbers because people say, yeah, but. But at least it's not 5%, right? There's real performance on the table doing this right. Maybe you're in the middle of there and you can only get 2x more, that's fine. But these kind of things, the difference between getting it almost right and completely right is completely nonlinear. Um, we did that. Now, machine learning and data analytics are pieces. We also realized we have to make a much more complicated system. Um, this, was a, this was basically sentiment analysis, which was about, okay, we have a bunch of text coming in from, let's say, Twitter feeds and other sources. How do we know our product announcement was done well? Which is a very typical pe thing people do in marketing or in retail. And it turns out it's a bunch of those vertical stacks I just showed you chained together in a way that actually makes them work together. And then you have another layer of complexity, making sure they work well together. And also, this you can also get on our website as a way of, hey, here's how you put all these pieces together to get end-to-end -to -end performance for your total problem, not just for these individual pieces. Okay, with that, um, time to get my paycheck back. Um, my boss wants, me, wants you to know that we have an Intel booth. We have a lot of demos, all the things I showed you. We have demos in the booth upstairs. There's a bunch of sessions from, from my coworkers who are talking today and tomorrow and Friday. Please visit them. Come talk to us at the booth, and well, thank you.